She asked me the other day, she said, uh, what do you think about marriage? I said, I don't think, I don't think about marriage, I do marriage. <laughs> You have no idea what we have we planned for you, you so. Right. <laughs> for Joyce? Yeah, no. For you. <laughs> you, Dave. Okay. I can walk off this set anytime I want. <laughs> <laughs> He's already starting with threats. Welcome to Talk It Out. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> we have a special guest with us today on the show, one of your favorite guests of all time. Dave Meyer is here with Yay! all of the ladies today. Yay! Yes. <laughs> and we know that the the marriage episode that we did quite a while ago um, is the top played episode of all of Talk It Out. <laughs> mm-hmm. So Dave, you... You're the smash hit here. Well, they just want to see what's behind Joyce. <laughs> Who's the guy behind the lady? <laughs> yeah, right. And I think a lot of people want to talk about their marriage a little bit, too. So yeah. today we're yeah. continuing our reoccurring series on what are you thinking. And today we're going to talk about the importance of marriage and the way that we think really impacts our our relationships. Whether you're married or not, this is going to be really helpful. Yeah. But um, there's there's no way around it. You can think yourself into a worse marriage sometimes. Oh, yeah. After 56 and a half years, trust me, I've learned how to think right. (laughs) You both said, oh, yeah. 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 (laughs) 56 and a half years. 56 and a half years, yeah. That's That's quite an accomplishment. It is. is. How how has your thinking (laughs) about each other, about marriage in general, changed through those years? Uh, Quite drastically. Uh, (laughs) In the beginning, of course, I mean, with Joyce, you know, having uh, gone through the childhood she went through, it was very difficult. But uh, uh, in those years, she was uh, like a (laughs) yo-yo. She did a lot of things uh, erratically because of the hurt she went through. And, uh, you know, like I tell people, I told people uh, a couple of times she wouldn't talk to me for three weeks, wouldn't say one word for three weeks mm-hmm. when she got mad. So, you know, those are things that everybody, not three weeks probably, but uh, everybody in marriage deals with prop situations, ups and downs, good and bad. And, mm-hmm. and uh, you know, to, to have the blessings in marriage, you have, you have to go through all those things and learn, learn about your wife and, and, uh, and your life and how to deal with those situations. Mm-hmm. And uh, now our marriage is so much different because we basically let, let each other be themselves. And really, that's God's design because his design is for, you know, her great qualities to fill my bad qualities mm-hmm. or qualities I don't have. You in mean my, there's my, any? My, <laughs> I knew she'd chime in. (laughs) She was waiting for that one. Yeah, right. (laughs) Are my good qualities to fill in her Uh qualities? And in the beginning, she had a lot of tough situations and bad qualities that, you know, uh, I had to be strong enough to live through. And and God, yeah, I mean, Uh I can't say that it's my, it was my uh, effort or great ability because God had prepared me for this all uh, the young years growing up, you know, and, and, uh, you know, the relationship I have with him. And so she asked me the other day, she said, uh, what do you think about marriage? I said, I don't think, I don't think about marriage. I do marriage. <laughs> and basically what I do is, is, so uh, good. <laughs> is, is I take uh, the word of God and apply it in areas that it needs to be applied. And really you can't do that unless you know the word of God. Yeah. So, so that's the, really the crux of marriage is uh, if you if you know the word of God, if you're privileged to know the word of God, which tells you, uh, shows you how to deal with situations, and you apply that word, then that gets you through those situations. Mm-hmm. And yeah. so, you know, like he said, he knew that he couldn't change me, right. mm-hmm. so he would just he would pray. Yeah. Mm. Well, so there's a big thing right there. Yeah. yeah. It's like. Because it'd be easy to think yeah. she'll never change. Mm-hmm. Well, yeah, and, and he End said... End of story. I think one of the most important things that Dave has said, I want to be sure we bring it out on this show, is that he said he knew in the beginning that marriage was forever. Yeah. Mm. yeah. So he didn't start playing that game in his head, if you keep this up, sure, I'm not going to stay. You didn't mm-hmm. think about changing. No. That, yeah. you, you, know how many, you know how many people plan to get a divorce if things don't... Mm-hmm. 
if this doesn't change, I'm out of here. Mm -hmm. If you, I'm not going to put up with this if you don't change. And he never thought like that. He said, this marriage is forever. And he knew he couldn't change me, which is the second biggest mistake that everybody makes is they try to change each other. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And, you know, you can't. It's an inside job. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You can't Honestly. possibly know somebody. Well, especially Dave and I, we had five dates and got married, so we, I, we, didn't, we didn't know each other at all, mm -hmm. at all. I mean, I didn't even know Dave played golf, and that's like— Oh, man. <laughs> that's like a major part of our yeah. life now. And uh, You've also said, though, that if you had more than five dates, that you know, it may not have worked out this way. He probably would have seen what he was getting and ran. I wouldn't have. <laughs> <laughs> that's so It was sweet. a supernatural intervention, really, yeah. uh, for uh, he liked, me to he do likes it. A I was looking, you know, yeah. I, like I said, I was looking for a wife at that time. And, uh, you know, I'd, I'd been out of service for three years, and, and I was dating three girls, and I thought, these are not <laughs> well, the girls. Well, look at you, yeah. Dave yeah. Meyer. Well, how about that, huh? Three boys <laughs> of faith without works is dead. Yeah, faith without works is dead. I mean, you're, you're not going to find the right one, or you're going to sit around and hope they come your way. And That's so, good advice for the singles today. Although that, it did happen that way. A, a guy needed a ride home, and, you know, of course, I, I think I shared this on the last show. A guy I worked with in the engineering field <laughs> needed a ride home one night, and there she was outside. And, you know, I had prayed for somebody, and I prayed for somebody that needed help. And uh, <laughs> That was a mistake. <laughs> no, it wasn't a mistake. That's how I got you. <laughs> and so along comes Joy. She's out there washing the car in short shorts, and I said, oh, she looks cute. Oh. And so I... Back then, you rolled down the windows, you know, hand rolled them down. <laughs> and, uh, so it took a little said, while. I said, hey, after you wa done washing that car, you want to wash mine? And first word comes out of her mouth is, buddy, if you want your car washed, wash it yourself. And so what went off of me was, that's the girl for me. That's the girl for me. And, so, you know, that's, I mean, that had to be a su supernatural. It had that to be to divine intervention. Yeah. I mean, who would, who would think yeah. like that? Yeah. yeah. But, so when I mean, she was a yo-yo in the beginning, yeah. what did you up think? And down, up and down. Yeah. Huh? Did you... Did you uh, think well, about no, I knew what she had gone through and why she was in, in this situation, yeah. why mm -hmm. her condition was that way. And I, it didn't make it, mm -hmm. you know, easy or anything, but it, it still gave me an, an uh, understanding of where she was and why she was that yeah, way. That's and huge. so that, that helped a lot, you know, and like I said, uh, I knew marriage, uh, you know, I've been raised in a Christian family and I knew marriage was for life. And mm -hmm. I believe that in my heart. And uh, so that wasn't even an issue. So the, the next step was, okay, we deal with each situation as it comes up, you know, and you, it's like anything in life, you learn by experience or growth, you know, little by little, step by step. And, and so we learned about yeah. each other and, and now, now our, our marriage is, you know, a great marriage. And uh, of course it has been for many, many years. It's a great marriage, and we never have an argument anymore. Uh, but we, I think we do occasionally, but he doesn't think so. No. So. <laughs> well, so you argue about hey, listen, if it's an argument or not. Yeah. Yeah. In the beginning, if we if we had words, I call it words. If we had words, she would, I would. Uh, after we kind of got over it, I would never remember it. But <laughs> she could remember things. Two years back. Oh, absolutely, three years, we can. I mean, <laughs> she had it charted one thing after another. You know? I mean, it would come out. Boom, 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 boom. I, I, well, my oh, memory's not that good I, anymore. <laughs> well, that's why our marriage is so good. <laughs> Something but, to look forward to for all of our marriages. He was like, where <laughs> do you keep forgotten. all this yeah. stuff stored? I thought, yeah. man. She has an Excel of, spreadsheet. You got, a, you got a computer for a mind. How do you remember all this stuff? Because, I, you know, I... When it's over, it's over. I just yeah. forget it. It's, it's done with, you know, and so yeah. go on. I remember when Dave came to me and he said, you know what, I've tried every way that I know how to make you happy, hmm. and you just don't want to be happy. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to be happy whether you are or not. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, oh, that infuriated me because mm -hmm. he would just go on and enjoy his life no matter yeah. how miserable I was. But it actually was one of the best things he did for me because— if you let an unhappy person make you unhappy, then you're codependent. Yeah. Mm. And yeah. a lot of people watching are. Yeah. They they wait to see if they can be happy till they see if their kid that's a problem is happy or their husband that's a problem is happy. And each one of us is responsible for our own joy. Yes, we are. And so he went ahead and enjoyed his life. And eventually I thought, 
it became an example to me, and I wanted what he had. Mm -hmm. So for Christian people watching, if you're married to somebody that's either an unbeliever or somebody that's a wounded believer, you, you need to live the Christian life in front of them. Don't stay so busy trying to get them to do what's right. But you just be stable in doing what's right. Yeah. And that really had a greater impact on me than anything. And then as far as thinking is concerned, one of the big mistakes that I made is I would always think about what was wrong with Dave. Yeah. And that's what we shouldn't do. Mm -hmm. Because if you, if you took a list and you wrote down everything that's right with the person you're married to and everything that's wrong with them, I can pretty much guarantee that the right list would be a lot longer than the wrong list. I did that one day. <laughs> did it, and it, was that right? Yeah. 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 <laughs> it took some work though, because I was yeah. really mad that day. Yeah. yeah. But it well, it did take some work. Yeah. So the wrong things are the at wrong. the forefront yeah. of your yeah. mind. Yeah. Those all came out that long. Yeah, the wrong the list got front. longer. First. You had to search yeah. for the good. <laughs> I did, but it helped. But it's like when we focus on those things, then you forget all the good things. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And what we need to do is pray about the things that are bothering us. And always remembering, you know, anytime you pray for somebody else, you better do it with some humility yeah. because you got issues too. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> and uh, that is such a good so point. True. Yeah. I mean, I just, yeah. Anytime yeah. I pray about something that I think is wrong with somebody else, I always say, you know, I got plenty of issues of my own. So sure. I do this with all humility. And the other and, thing is uh, when you pray for somebody, uh, don't expect everything to work out perfect right off the bat. As mm -hmm. a matter of fact, it usually gets worse because then mm -hmm. when you're praying and God's working on them, then their flesh is going to act up. Yeah. And people uh, think, well, prayer didn't work. Mm -hmm. But that's, that's the time to get, get encouraged, not discouraged. And most people get discouraged because they think their prayer isn't working yeah. when in, in actuality it is working. Yeah, I had that exact experience yeah. um, praying for Tim. And I, I had prayed this verse that I knew God gave me for him. Uh -huh. For, for years in our marriage, when this problem came to light, that he had a, a, a problem with pornography. Yeah. And at first I was like, God, how can this be? You know, yeah. I've been praying this for so long. Yeah. And so why are we having this come up now? And, and it was just like God told me so clearly in my spirit it, it's come up now because you've been praying this. He's right. going to deal with it. Yeah. You're going to get past exactly. it. Yeah. So it, it does. It feels yeah. like yeah. the prayer wasn't answered. Yeah. Everything fell apart right. instead. Yeah. And sometimes yeah. you have to get to that point yeah. for yeah. the prayer to be answered. That's right. Because that's true. When God Most starts issues. dealing with you, you usually act worse. Yeah. yeah. That's so and uh, so you see, now when I act bad, you can just... <laughs> God's God working. God, yes. Dave. God's answering my <laughs> prayers. Give you a certain amount of time. <laughs> <laughs> well, we do love it you when when Joyce is teaching, and she always uses so many great stories about Dave. Yeah. And every now and then, Dave disagrees yeah. on on a story, yeah. and he thinks I exaggerate. I I don't no. know how anybody could think that I would exaggerate. <laughs> I, you embellish <laughs> embellish stories, and that, nice. that means you add to. <laughs> well, we're going to take a look at one of those experiences that that we had at a conference. And then we're going to come back and dissect it and talk about a few of the things that come up in this conversation. It's going to be fun. Watch this. Dave did a little shopping today. And he bought two paintings that he loved. And guess who didn't? And do they match anything in the house? <laughs> Dave likes things to stand out. <laughs> but the problem is he wants everything to stand out. So you go in a room and you think you're going crazy. <laughs> because it's all standing out. Okay, now, this is between sessions. And I'm not liking this. And I could feel it coming. How many of you know you can feel it coming? It starts somewhere down in here and just moves up. And here's the trick. You got to stop it before it gets to your mouth. Oh, 
I didn't want the pictures. I didn't want to spend the money. But we have them. And I realized I am going tonight to teach on entering the rest of God. Come on. I am going tonight to teach on entering the rest of God, and the devil is standing on his head trying to upset me. And I'm not going there. Been there, done that, no thank you. So he can just put his pictures in his room, in his office, lock himself in there, and just trying to figure out what to look at. He's talking to me about these paintings, and I've got like a million things running through my head trying to get ready for all this stuff, and I'm like painting, 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 painting painting how much what huh and then I had to go see them and I didn't want to go see them because I didn't have time to go see them and then when I saw them I really didn't want them but we have them Now he <laughs> hey. You know, this was long overdue. Go over and sit down for a minute, will you? <laughs> this has been long overdue. <laughs> I could, have bought, I could have bought the most beautiful picture of Jesus and she would have said, I don't like it. <laughs> hey, listen, she's inferring that I, I'm always right. Well, I'm married to Miss Wrong. Her, the problem is her first name is Never. <laughs> Come on, ladies, help me. <laughs> Dave was just saying that you still love those paintings. Yeah, right? I still don't like them. <laughs> Do you still have them? Oh, yeah. Oh, yes, absolutely. <laughs> you would not will... believe the artwork that Dave has in his office. And it's beautiful. All I mean, beautiful. <laughs> everything in there is different. It's a matter of opinion. It's my like, dear. I know. <laughs> He'll have like a snow covered mountain and a big sunset. and A sunset? What sunset? But he, he does have a lot of pictures of me, so that kind Aww. of that was, that helps counter it. <laughs> it does counter it. So let's talk about some of the things that came up in that conversation. Well, so one thing that came yeah. up is now I, now I have freedom to get as many pictures as I want. Yeah, I did hear that. Because if she didn't learn her lesson, I have to keep going, you know, to <laughs> help teach her. <laughs> it's your duty. It's to your help duty. With this. Yeah. <laughs> he always tells me that. That God had him marry me to crucify my flesh, and I said, "You're not far from wrong." That's a portion of it, yes. <laughs> well, the differences of opinion, right? Yeah. So you know, we we like different things, mm -hmm. we expect different things. We're different people, right? Yeah. So, how do you handle that, and how do you think differently about it? Hmm. <laughs> not always real peacefully. <laughs> yeah. I mean, things are a little different now. We've yeah we've learned like Dave. When we moved into the house we're in now 16 years ago, we finally made a deal because we don't, us decorating together is not good. <laughs> it's just not good. Because like I said, he wants everything to stand out and I want everything to match. And so there were two offices in the house and one of them was okay and one of them was great. It had windows, panoramic windows, windows all around. I said, I'll make you a deal. You can have the best office if I can decorate the house. <laughs> and so sometimes you got to compromise yeah, and bargain a, a little compromise. bit. But now since, she, since she's decorated the house and she's come in my office and saw the windows, uh, the nice view and everything, she says, I got the bad end of this deal. <laughs> <laughs> and you love the way I decorated the house. 
That's all right. No, you you <laughs> like no, it. It's good. It's good. <laughs> that's a the difference of opinion has been one that's come up for us quite a bit, especially in 2020. So everybody's opinions about everything. Everybody was mm. talking about their opinions. Big opinions. Big opinions. And that was also a year that Mike and I started going through some really difficult things. So it exacerbated our difference of opinions. Yeah. And he had a really difficult time with the fact that I didn't agree with him on everything. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. He he told me later that. It made, <laughs> excuse me, Dave. <laughs> he said it made, like for bigger things, it made him feel unsafe that I didn't think exactly like he thought because yeah. he thought that meant we weren't unified. And I said, no, I just have a different opinion and, and it's okay. It. So I remember reading your book about loving people who are hard to love. It came out around then. And I, there was a couple of pages you talked about how you have to learn that it's okay to disagree, like agree, agree. to disagree. And I highlighted it, and I took a picture and sent it to him, and I said, <laughs> this is what we need. Because I think it's, it's not intuitive to just yeah. be okay with that. Yeah. Well, she was that way. She <laughs> was that way because of the way she had been treated. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And she thought when I disagreed with her on something or I had my opinion on something, mm -hmm. it wasn't, wasn't actually a disagreement. I have an opinion. She's got an opinion. You know, if, if, it, if there's something where we don't have the same opinion, I'm not saying her opinion is wrong, but I have the right to my opinion. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so she felt like I was saying her opinion is wrong by voicing my opinion, yeah. mm -hmm. which is not really the truth. Mm -hmm. it's, uh, and it so would over, help, though, if you said you could be right. So and over, that doesn't uh, hurt. Yeah, sure. Over a period of time, I did. I, I said that. I said, uh, uh, you have a right to your opinion. Right. I have a right to mine. Mm -hmm. And uh, over a period of time, you know, she has you know, saw that, you know, because I can see why she couldn't at first because of the way she was treated all sure. her young life growing up. But then after a period of time, she realized that she was doing that. And it I felt yeah. rejected yeah. Yeah. if he didn't agree with my opinion. Uh -huh. And God had to teach me that just because he rejects your opinion mm -hmm. doesn't mean he's rejecting you right. Right. as a person. Yeah. And those are hard to sometimes separate. separate right? Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. oh, that's good. I, I remember having having similar things in in our marriage where you know we're just very different with whether it's opinions or just the way that we handle things or whatever. Yeah. And and I remember thinking, I wish he was more like me, yeah. <laughs> yeah. which is not the that's a terrible thing yeah. to think. Yeah. I mean, but you are great. So <laughs> <laughs> thank you, it and I helpful. love you for that. <laughs> but there are so many things that he brings that I need, yeah, right. and sure. like you guys were talking about earlier, yeah. filling in for one another. But that thought of I I wish he was more whatever. Yeah. I wish he was less whatever instead right. of appreciating what God mm -hmm. puts in him and how we complement each other and right. and how he really does help take me places, balance things out, you know, that I, I wouldn't go without him. Yeah. So that, that thought process, yeah. whether it's just opinion or we're meant to be different. That's, right. that's exactly. the whole point. Mm -hmm. Yeah, most people marry opposites, you know. Yeah. And that's the reason is, because the strengths that you need, they have. Mm -hmm. And the weaknesses that you have, you know, they fill. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Tim and I have one that's very similar to you guys, too, and that's that uh, I, I'm a storyteller. Like, I, I've i been accused of exaggerating mm -hmm. may, maybe once or twice. Most women do. And <laughs> <Probably>. <laughs> but at the same time, I'm a condenser, so, you yeah. know, I want it to have a point. Sure. Tim is a detail man. You know, he's an engineer, so it's uh -huh. all about the details yeah. and um, the stories. I, I can gloss over, and at some point, I'm just like, yeah. <laughs> Get to the point. Yeah, yeah, you know, right. I I don't need the whole spreadsheet. <laughs> yeah. That's exactly the way I am. Everything that's happening. But I I have also learned to appreciate some of the things that I could gloss over and miss mm -hmm. that he he brings out yeah. and he holds on to. So, but that's taken some time yeah, and I too. I told her, I told her, you know, you don't like detail, yet when you teach, you you teach with detail. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so, you know. <laughs> yeah, it's interesting. Can't have it both ways. Yeah. <laughs> I'm a bottom line person. You uh -huh. know, I can go through a museum in 30 minutes and Dave can be in there for three days. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's how you learn. Yeah. Well, another thing that came up when you guys were talking in that last clip, and it wasn't a big deal for what you guys were saying. It was, it was just a, a brief mention, but one of the biggest areas that people have problems with in their marriages is finances. And yes. you're like, I didn't want to spend the money. And right. David spent the money. So how are some ways that 
people can handle that in their marriages, their relationships? Well, trying to talk things out is always the best way and to come to some kind of an agreement on how you're going to handle your finances. And actually, one of the big mistakes that people make is they get married without ever having talked about any of these things. Mm. You know, you, you should talk about how do you like to handle finances, you know. How do I like to handle finances? You know, like one person wants to save everything, the other person wants to spend everything. Well, that's really something you need to know before you get married because you, you know, you marry somebody because you like the way they look or you like the way they make you feel. Mm -hmm. And then as soon as you get married, all these other things come up that you didn't know about. I mean, some people get married and don't even know if their partner wants to have kids or not. Mm -hmm. And so... There's, there's a lot of things that people really should talk about and really get to know each other yeah. before they get married. Then you wouldn't have so many of these, well, I didn't think that was going to happen. Well, I didn't, I didn't think that was going to happen. Yeah. And uh, we, so you get a lot of surprises then when you get married. And mm -hmm. spending money, you know, it all depends upon where you're at in your marriage. <clears throat> you know, if you if yeah. have to be frugal in the beginning, very frugal in the beginning, and you can't spend money or shouldn't spend money, then you have to really watch it. <clears throat> Later on, you may be able to buy some things that you couldn't have earlier. Mm -hmm. And right. <clears throat> so it all depends upon where you're at in your marriage financially, you know, and, and um, you know, if you have the ability to, to do what you yeah. Well, and I had fear about a lot of things, and money was one of them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so yeah. Dave just didn't have, I mean, if we had it, he was okay spending it, but I wanted to save everything in case. So really what I was trying to do was make sure I was taking care of myself. Mm -hmm. yeah. And there's nothing wrong with saving. You should, yeah. mm -hmm. you should save. And realizing that different things are different, uh, of different importance yeah. right. to different people. And, right. and we do have to yeah. talk through that stuff and figure it out together and get to the root of why it's Absolutely. important. Yeah. 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 When Mike and I first got married, he's the spender. He'll freely admit he's a spender of the two of us. And I, I'm like you. Like, I would prefer that we save as much as possible. So he would bring me, when we first got married, he would print off pieces of paper of things he'd find that he wanted to buy. And he, he would highlight the price and write notes on the paper, and he'd leave them on my chair. Like, look, I did my homework. Can we buy this? And I'd always say, no, we cannot buy that. But <laughs> what was so helpful for us in the beginning was having conversations of, like, Besides this stuff, like, what's our goals here? Like, what are the things that we both want? Mm -hmm. What what do we agree on together? It was so helpful because it avoided some of that, like, miscommunication mm -hmm. on things that could make us yeah. upset. God taught me about money when I was at a very young age and, and how to uh, save money and mm -hmm. take care of money. And, and when you have money, only to you, there's many things you might want. But what's the most important thing you want? Spend yeah. it on, you know, spend some money on that and then and keep my eye. When I was a kid, I saved, uh, when I, in 1956, uh, I was 16 years old, and I paid $1,000 for a car. In 1956, that was equivalent to probably ten to $15,000 now. And I saved that cutting grass and selling pretzels, selling papers and all kinds of stuff. Uh, I had a, a Band-Aid can full of $20 bills and a few $50 bills in there. And when we went to uh, to uh, get a notary public to uh, take care of the deal between me and this other guy that was selling the car, um, and I pulled out that Band-Aid can, <laughs> and he says, where did you get that much money? And I said, I saved it. Wow. He said, I've never seen anything like this. Huh. you know. And I saved it. I, I'd keep it in socks in my drawer. Uh -huh. So nobody knew where it was. you know. Yeah. And I have four or $500 as, as a kid, like 12, 13 years old. Yeah. yeah. So uh, that was a lot of money. That was that was like thousands and thousands of dollars a day. But back then, it's, uh, God just showed me how to uh, and put that in me. And you know, like when we had this ministry, I started this ministry. You know, that's that was in right. me to make sure that we didn't waste money and make sure we spent money properly. And yeah. So, God put that in you. Yeah, very early then. He did. He he prepared me for what was ahead. Uh, you yeah. know, you look back that's on things awesome. and you see in our marriage and everything. You see, you see where God. You know, now you see after the fact where God had all this plan and set up all way ahead of time, you know. Yeah. And, you know, he's patient. That's yeah. part of his personality. Yeah. So if he wants something, he had the ability to save for it and wait, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know, where most of us want it right now. Yeah. Right. And we're willing to make payments on it. Right. And it's so wise to 
to wait mm -hmm. and yeah. save because then you're not paying a bunch of interest mm -hmm. right. on stuff that you don't even know that you've got anymore yeah. or you've already used it all up. Yeah. I have a question from one of our Talk It Out friends in the audience. Um, they say, how do you let things go very fast after forgiving? They're talking about offense. How do you not hold on to offenses? I find it difficult to let it go after forgiving. I've prayed to be able to forgive and let things go quickly because I know that love doesn't keep a record of offense. So we, we were just talking about that in, in what Joyce went through, that, that it, it almost makes sense because your whole life was filled with all these things. Yeah. How were you able to change that, both of you, to, to stop keeping that record of, of offense and to forgive quickly? Well, he never had the problem. It was me with the problem, but it was the Word of God that changed me. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And Absolutely. for me, I found out that the quicker I let something go, the easier it is. If you And, and I, now I'll even mm -hmm. say it. Nope. I refuse to get yeah. offended. I'm yeah. not going to go there because Satan loves strife. He wants to bring discord and strife and disunity. And you have to realize that it is the devil that's trying to wreak havoc in your relationship. And there's nothing that does it more than strife and harboring, smiling at each other while you've got all this stuff mm -hmm. going on inside. Mm -hmm. So for me... If you, if you think about something and think about it and think about it and you let it take root, mm -hmm. that's really what you're doing. The more you think about it, the deeper those roots yeah, are sure. going. Yeah. yeah. But if you, if you just for, say, I'm, no, you get rid yeah. of it right away. Mm -hmm. yeah. And, you know, sometimes it helps if you think about, we think about what this person did wrong, but let's think about maybe something I did wrong. Mm -hmm. Maybe it wasn't this time, but it might have been the last time. And Dave is really good about forgiving and just letting stuff go. And uh, he, he's a good example in that area of just not holding on to things. Yeah. Well, what do you say we take a look at another clip? Because we have a, a, another interchange from Joyce's <laughs> special guest at a conference. And um, we'll, we'll talk about what happens afterwards. Let, can I have my prop? Here's something that Dave does that drives me absolutely bonkers. Now wait, when he eats cereal, I am like, you have got to stink and be kidding. I mean, the cereal is not attached to the bottom of the bowl. I don't make noise when I eat cereal. It's a peaceful thing. The other day, <laughs> he's down there with two dishes to bang together. The other day, and I'm not exaggerating, he was in the kitchen. I was all the way back in our bedroom, which is a little bit of distance, and I could hear the man banging the bowl. <laughs> oh. It annoys me. Here's another thing that he does. <laughs> You're going to mess up my message. You know what? <laughs> How many of you do things that you, you know that might uh, irritate your wives? <laughs> but it gives you pleasure. <laughs> The more it annoys me, the more I do it. <laughs> the sad thing is, is that's true. He does, too. He thinks it's funny if he, if he can get me aggravated. Now, I know what I'm in for tomorrow morning. He will bang the bottom of that bowl as loud as he possibly can just because it came up on this show, and now he's reminded that it annoys me. We apologize. And he'll do it again tomorrow. Well, I was washing a couple of dishes the other day, and when you put one dish on top of another, I don't go like that. <laughs> Just plop it on there, and it makes noise. You know, because they're glass dishes. And uh, she says, do you have to do that? So I just pick it up and drop it, and knock it up again. So you do it on purpose. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Oh, yeah. But he does wash yeah. dishes, which is great. I just wish he'd wash them quieter. <laughs> 
I guess you have to take what you can get sometimes, right? Yeah. So the thing that I love the most about Dave is that he lets me be me. Yeah. Yeah. And me is not always great, (laughs) but he. uh, It is now. Yeah. But you know, we've all got annoying. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah, we do. do. I mean, there are things that you could get upset about, but you just. He just. He he thinks that I'm funny. Yeah. You know, so he just. (laughs) Let's them go. And that's really, if you're going to have a good marriage, yeah. you, you have to come to that point where you're either going to be upset because this person is not doing things the way you want them to all the time, mm-hmm. or you're going to think, hey, I do things that are annoying too. And you, you can think yourself into a fit, or mm-hmm. you can think yourself out of one. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And so you really do need to watch your thinking in all of these situations, and you can turn it around by looking at it a different way. That's good. So I have a question I have to ask before we leave these couch, this pink couch today. <laughs> um, I, I had yeah, made a list yeah. of our top five, four, or top five fights we've had in the past month that we can all top talk five. through today. <laughs> fights. Oh, disagreements. Top five. Um, what do you call them? Words? Or words. The words that I we've mean, had. Words. Yeah. yeah. But one recently that we've kind of been working through is we fundamentally think differently. Like our, like our, we process differently. Uh-huh. So the way that I perceive a situation is so different from Mike. And it's not that it's either way is wrong. It's just we see things different. Yeah. And I process verbally and want to talk about it. He's like, this is the answer. It's black and white. Why, yeah. why would we talk about this? Because yeah. I have things I need to say. It's logical. I hate that word. <laughs> yes. It's logical. It's logical, Aaron. Why would you not see it this way? Yeah. Because I do, and I'll probably get there. But let me talk about it to yeah, get right. there. So, so what do you do with that? How do you communicate when you... I don't. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, that makes it very easy. No. <laughs> uh, I don't know if... Uh, I'll I let mean, you start this he'll, one. he'll sit and listen to me, but yeah. I know he don't care. <laughs> <laughs> well, same I, mean, I, I share things with you, same thing. And I, same so I've just gotten to the point where I'm... <laughs> you know, at this point, you just... Things that you know aren't going to work out, you just don't do them. Huh. You know, it's like I used to, I, like I told you girls earlier, I told Dave one time, we never talk about anything deep. I would lock, like, I want to I want to go deeper. And he's like, look, this is as deep as I get. You take it or leave it. And that, I mean, that that's just him. I mean, yeah. you know, now my son can come over and we can sit and, you know, hypothesize on, you know, well, what if this and what if that and what if something else and. For Dave, that's all stupid. It's just like wasted <laughs> breath because uh-huh. you, don't, you don't know that's going to happen. Why should, he'll uh-huh. wait and deal with it later. Yeah. But I hate it when we're trying to talk about something and he says that's not logical. Yeah, Men that. and their logic. Mm-hmm. It's like we you know it's true. We we <laughs> want, but we don't want to hear it. But we want to talk through it. Yeah. We want to feel it. Yeah. We uh-huh. want to discuss yeah. it. And so I think at this point, you know, he'll go. I understand, and I'm like, yeah. no, you don't. <laughs> she, you know, yeah. Well, here, here's the thing: is for years she'd say, if I, if she'd bring something up, and I, and uh, I wouldn't think it was right, or uh, or when, wouldn't wouldn't give say, me the reaction. Give I want your reaction. She wanted. She'd say, uh, you don't understand. You don't understand. Just tell me. I, I, under, you understand. Just tell me you understand. <laughs> Just say. So it. I finally said, I understand. She says, No, you don't. <laughs> I said, <laughs> I can't win, so why even do it? Why even try it? Yep. <laughs> and we are just so different. Uh, no, Men yeah. and women are just different, yeah. and you just I have to like. Re- reason. Yeah. I mean, and this whole logic thing, I mean. I would say the majority of men are that way. So obviously, ladies, yeah. we have to finally admit that God must have made them that way. Yeah, it's yeah, good. And so maybe we need a little bit of the logic yeah. to kind of tone down some of our emotions mm-hmm. and feelings. Well, I think God That's did it to have, for us to have fun, you know? Yeah. <laughs> Can I tell you one of the annoyances with Tim? Since I, oh, I just yeah, think please. it's a really good yeah. time to share. Yeah, let's do it. Yeah. It's, it's not really deep or important, but, you know, it's <laughs> annoying. <laughs> so, it's annoying. Tim falls asleep really right. easily all the time mm-hmm. in any location, <laughs> any opportunity that he has. And so, like, we'll, we'll be at home and we'll be in the middle of a conversation. <laughs> no. And, and now, normally, if it's really important, he won't. But, you know, he'll just kind of go to sleep. <laughs> and while and you're then, talking? Yes. And then, then it, he'll, like, 
answer something all of a sudden and say yes and i'm like you didn't hear a word i was saying you, you were asleep he goes no i heard i heard everything you said like you were snoring you were asleep oh that's a good and, one and he'll go to sleep with the remote in his hand um, and so then well, I have to pry the remote out of his, you know, cold, stiff fingers so that I can watch something else on television. Or he'll fall asleep in a movie, wake up and say, this movie doesn't make any sense. <laughs> and also, it's because you slept for the past half hour. It's yeah. not going to make no. sense. So, Sometimes to watch a whole movie in the evenings, I have to rewind it five times. <laughs> oh, yeah. We'll watch a movie. She want to watch a movie. So we'll sit down and watch a movie. Within about 10 minutes, she's sound asleep. She's over there sound asleep. <laughs> and so uh, she wakes up for the very end. And she says, tell me what happened in the middle. I said, nope. <laughs> You're going to have to watch it over. I'm going to tell you the whole movie. <laughs> That's what that rewind button is for. You do learn, if, if you stay married, you do learn that all those things that you got so upset about, yeah. We're really kind of so. Yeah, that's yeah. that's yeah. For that sure. is really true. I think God does that just so, just so we can almost laugh at each other. Finally, the sad you know? thing yeah. is, is so We're many different. people they have that mentality: "I'm out of here if you don't change." Mm -hmm. And you know, people can't change people; only God can. Yeah, that's right. Mm -hmm. And there's there's a, there's a lot of pride mm -hmm. that thinks I'm right, and you're always that's so you're true. wrong. Yeah. yeah. You know, we always want to change yeah. people, mm -hmm. but most of the time, we're the ones that need to change. Mm -hmm. And that's yeah. the same with, with a spouse or our kids. Yeah, exactly. Right. I mean, the yeah. way that we think about them right. makes such a huge difference. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, for sure. Yeah, I have four grown children, and they're all yeah, very different. 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 Yeah. And uh, yeah. You, you have to learn to... You know, what Paul said was he said to the Jew, I become a Jew, to the Greek, I become a Greek, whatever it takes to win them. Mm -hmm. And uh, I know he was talking about winning people to Christ, but I think that real love does learn how to meet people where they're at mm -hmm. instead of always trying to get them to come to where you're at. Yeah. Right. I heard a statement that we need to learn how to love people the way they are, not the way we'd like them to be. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes. That's hard. very true. Yeah. Here's one more question, um, and and this is for people who are in a, a more difficult marriage, when a marriage becomes toxic or dangerous, right. mm -hmm. um, when someone is consistently um, doing the same thing over and over that's dangerous or, or topic, toxic, how should, how should you begin thinking differently um, and to um, make a change so that you, you don't do something at the expense of your own health or well-being? Well, you always need to be safe. Yeah. And if you're not safe, then you need to get yeah, away from the situation. You and, God's not asking yeah. anybody. I mean, my mom stayed with my dad knowing that he was sexually abusing me, and that was the worst decision that she could have mm. ever made. And so you have to keep yourself and your children safe. Yeah. And there's... You know, God's not for divorce, but He's He's not for you being abused either. Right. Yeah, I think it's just important to bring out some of these things because yeah, everyone's situations are so different. Right. Yeah. And, and sometimes, you know, it doesn't have to be a divorce. Sometimes you just need to get away from each other for a while. Sometimes, if the person realizes you're serious, then they will go and get the help that they need. Mm -hmm. But just putting up with something, you mm -hmm. need to respect yourself enough. And value yourself enough that you're not going to let somebody else just totally disrespect you and yeah. and abuse you. Would yeah. you say? Would it, is it fair to say that if if you're because I've not been in a situation like that, but if you're in something like that, um, like the most important thing and in every aspect of your life is if you have that relationship with Christ and you're constantly going to Him and you're seeking Him for everything, He's giving you wisdom and discernment how to handle it. It's so you are not tackling this problem of your marriage. You're you're trusting him with your life, and he's guiding you as you have to make those hard decisions. It's because right. mm -hmm. it feels really overwhelming to me to think, like, how can you change that? Or if it's not, even if it's not as bad as what she's ex describing, you're just in a really hard marriage. That feels so overwhelming to me to like tackle. But what I do know I can do is seek God and right, study yeah. what His Word says, and yeah. then He shows you the steps. Yeah, He'll take. show you what to do. Prayer is one of the most important things, and a lot of times pe people don't. Mm -hmm pray they they try and handle it in themselves you know mm -hmm. and really it's god's god can handle it a lot of these things that seem 
overwhelmingly difficult yeah. and impossible, he can handle them in, and handle them in a short time yeah. if we yeah. just turn them over to him. You yeah. know, Prayer truly times. is amazing, and I've realized that more the last four or five years than all the years in my life. I probably pray about more things now than mm -hmm. ever. Just right. pray about it, let God handle it. Well, so we are going to talk about how to walk it out now. This is going to give you some scripture that you can really take and apply and utilize it exactly for what we were talking about. You can find these scriptures at joycemeyer.org slash talk it out and take this a little bit deeper. So it's not just a conversation that you listen to, but it's something that we were talking about where that word of God begins to seep into your life and become a part of who you are. So some questions to ask yourself is to ask God to help you see the way your thoughts are taking you. And if something surfaces that you need to confront, invite God to help you. That prayer that we were talking about makes such a difference. What are you thinking about yourself? What are you thinking about your spouse? These are really important things. So the verses, Colossians 3.14 and above all these, put on love, which binds everything together in perfect harmony. No marriage is perfect, but God's love is. And you've got that power in you to do everything that you possibly can to be more like Him, and He will help you. So put on love above all else. And then 1 Corinthians 13, a wonderful chapter on love. Dig into that. Read all about it. But these verses 4 through 8, love is patient. Love is kind. It does not envy. It does not boast. It is not proud. It does not dishonor others. It is not self-seeking. It is not easily angered. It keeps no record of wrongs. Love does not delight in evil, but rejoices with the truth. It always protects, always trusts, always hopes, always perseveres. Love never fails. So dig into those scriptures, hold on to them, and I believe that you'll begin to walk it out and see a big difference in your relationships too. Thank you guys for, for making us laugh and encouraging us in, in our relationships and helping us all to think in a more godly way, I guess, more lined up with scripture about ourselves, about our relationships, about our marriages. Well, the Bible says we have the mind of Christ. We That's just right. need to use it. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm going to pray for Tim to stay awake when he talks to you. Thank you. <laughs> if you, like if you would do that, I, we would both appreciate it greatly. I know. Yeah. <laughs> all right. We'll see you all next time. Bye. Bye.